It's been about a month since we lit a huge fire here in our homemade furnace and turned rocks into metal. With this particular smelt, the goal was to try to create iron without using iron. The question that we're interested in is like hammers. Hammers are made out of metal and you use them to forge metal and then the anvil is usually made out of metal. How did they do it at first? Who was the first person who made iron and how did that work? without metal tools. Well, that's what we're gonna try. We're gonna try to forge some of this bloom without using any iron tools. Right now, we're sifting through the furnace to try to figure out what was slag and what was iron, what's good and what's worth keeping. And really, we're gonna know a lot more about that as soon as we start forging it. We've done very little forging with bloom before, but one of the giveaways is if it looks liquid. If at any point it flowed, like this one right here, this is not iron. This is an iron-rich slag composed of silica, which is basically glass, and calcium, which was abundant in the ore, and then some iron atoms, but it's not metallic iron. And because it looks like it was liquid at one point, we can ditch it. But this one right here, which has a very granular, never been melted surface, this is probably iron. It's got a lot more weight to it as I feel it. Um, this stuff on the top is probably not. That's going to have to break off. There's some charcoal included right here. But this, this is what we want to keep. We're going to gather up a few more pieces of this and then I think we'll be ready. Huge thanks, huge, 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 huge thanks to Grant Thompson and Nate from the King of Random. They made this possible by providing the excellent high quality ore and also a whole lot of time pumping bellows with us. We really appreciate their support. This is the iron bloom. And as you can see, it's been a couple of weeks because it's already started to rust. However, that is a really good sign because it means it's real iron. So I'm gonna throw this down in the forge that we've got preheating, and then I'm gonna bank the charcoal all around it with these wooden tongs that we're gonna to use to try to pick up and manipulate the bloom. And then we are gonna try roasting the, this thing up to temperature. size we want. Okay. It should be deforming, but it looks like it's shattering. Which is not a good sign. I think it's deforming. I think it's doing both. Yeah, Alright. Next message. Agreed. I think it's deforming and shattering, which is yeah, a mixed message. A little weird. Not good at all. Oh, that's deforming, I think. Oh, no, it shattered. Yep, right Aristotle the hearth it is. What? Yep, we need an Aristotle hearth. Not to alarm you, ladies and gentlemen, but we've run into a snag. The charcoal forge, it works. It gets up to temperature, and then we whack it with a rock. That works. We've tested that. It works. But when we put in pieces of the iron bloom and then whack them on the anvil, they break. What I think this means is that we have slag, lots and lots of slag, masquerading as iron bloom. 
Now that's normal because basically what happens in a bloomery furnace is that you have individual particles of iron floating down through a sea of slag and eventually they stick together. They never actually melt. The iron in a smelt does not melt. What it actually ends up doing is something like what gummy bears will do if they are left in a hot car. They'll kind of fuse together, but you can still see the shape of the individual gummy bears. Now, if you were to add something to that analogy, like say hard crack candies in between the bits of the in between the bits of gummy bear. And so if you had a big blob of this stuff and if there were big gaps between the gummy bears made of this hard crack candy and you whacked it, it would crack and shatter. That's I think what's going on. So what we're gonna try doing is making what's called an Aristotle hearth, which is to take the remaining piece of our bloomery furnace and using that to reprocess the bloom bits that we have to try to get them all to congeal into one mass. Now, these are the blooms that have already broken. I can see a granular surface in them which indicates iron, but I also see a lot of smooth surface which kind of indicates slags. What we're doing, this is an Aristotle furnace. Yes. And it's gonna be pretty similar to what the normal bloom furnace that we used is. We're gonna yes. do layers of ore and charcoal, except for this time, instead of using ore, we're going to use the already created bloom. Yes, exactly. So one of the things that has been discussed on some of the bladesmithing forums is that this is a way to create steel. What you basically do is you run another uh, smelt, smaller and easier, but, and with less charcoal, just your starting material instead of iron oxide is iron. And then it carburizes on the way down. And the secondary thing, which is really what we're hoping for here, is that all the little pieces of iron are gonna fuse together again and give us another shot at turning this into something useful. Okay, well here we are outside of our little itty bitty Aristotle furnace. We just barely pulled out a discrete chunk from here and it was glowing orange and we hit it and we had the same problem, it broke apart. So not good. Yeah, the prognostications at this point are less than ideal. However, all is not lost. It could be that the one that we picked out was right from the top. In the next video, we're gonna show you what happened when we opened this thing and we'll see if there is a, a distinct new bloom formed, if any of the pieces coalesce together. It's like the light bulb. There's not a halfway right. You either got it or you had yet another dismal failure. And the number of dismal failures it took to get to making iron stuff must have been enormous. You either had to know exactly what you were doing. I mean, with, with pottery, you can kind of sort of do it badly and have it still turn out, as evidenced by the fact that we've gotten it to work already. But with this one, you have to be kind of expert level already, the cost of failure in the context, in the ancient world is higher because the amount of labor it takes to make charcoal and the furnace, that's a lot of labor, especially if you have to like make all the clothes you, that you wear and all the food that you eat and the house that you live in and you're constantly repairing things that fall apart. So who's gonna go out and innovate and spend all that labor on something that they have no idea if it's gonna work? Nothing happens and nothing happens and nothing happens and then holy crud, we made iron. Yeah. So uh, we're hoping that that's what we say when we open this up and look at the bottom and find the final bloom is holy crud we made iron. Uh, if not, then just know that we are going to figure out how to do this. We are going to make iron out of rocks. And we're going to forge it without using iron tools. And we're going to try making this thing from scratch because that is a way to understand the basics. And we think it's pretty good. If you're new to Good to Basic, make sure you hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell for alerts below. And that way you'll be able to see when we post a video where we open this thing up and pull the bloom out and pound it and turn it into iron. Yes, it might be this one or another or another or another. We'll get there.